Hello, this is Mrs. Lewis with today's lesson on how to calculate the charge on an object. Like mass, the charge on an object is measurable. And the charge on an object is measured in coulombs. This is named after the French scientist Charles Coulomb, who did a lot of studying on electrostatic charges. He found that the force between two charged objects was directly related to the charge on the object. If he increased the charge on the objects, the force between them would increase. He used a piece of equipment like this, and it had pith balls on the inside, and he was able to add or subtract electrons from the pith balls and create charge in them, and then study the force of attraction or repulsion between them. If you want to give an object a negative charge, we must add electrons. And we know that everyday objects that we see in the world have a lot of atoms and therefore a lot of electrons. The more electrons that we add, the more negative charge we get. The charge is measured in coulombs, but since we have so many electrons to deal with, the coulomb is a very large quantity. If we wanted to give an object a charge of negative 1 coulombs by adding electrons, we would need to add a lot of them, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. If we wanted to give an object a positive charge, we would have to remove electrons. And if we wanted to give it a positive charge of plus 1 coulombs, we would need to remove a lot of electrons, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. Another way of looking at this is to think about what is the charge on a single electron or proton. Well, that's going to be very, very, very small. So an electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, a very tiny number. And a proton has a charge of positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. We can use this to figure out what the charge is on, in, on a substance if we know the difference between the electrons and the protons. Suppose we charged an object and we gave it a positive charge by removing electrons. Then we would have to look at the amount of electrons that were left and subtract them from the number of protons. And we would then take that excess protons and multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to the 18th coulombs. Let's try this. Suppose we had a ping pong ball and we removed some electrons. So we had left 4 times 10 to the 10th protons, but only 2 times 10 to the 10th electrons. All right, what kind of charge would we have and how much charge? First of all, since we had removed the electrons and we have more protons than electrons, we have a positive charge. Now let's figure out how much. All right, we are going to subtract the electrons, 2 times 10 to the 10th, from the total protons, 4 times 10 to the 10th, and we find out that we have an excess of 2 times 10 to the 10th protons. Now we're going to multiply it by the charge on each proton. So 2 times 10 to the 10th times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th tells us that the charge on this object, this ping pong ball, is a positive 3.2 times 10 to the minus 9th. Let's try another problem. Suppose we have a, suppose we have a lightning bolt, and that lightning, lightning bolt has 5 coulombs of charge. We want to know how many excess electrons it has. We know that if we have 1 coulomb of charge, it takes 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So if we have 5 coulombs of charge, we have to multiply that times 6.25 times 10 to the 18th, and we would find that that lightning bolt has 3.125 times 10 to the 19th excess electrons. Coulomb came up with a law to explain what was happening. 
And he said that the force between two objects depends upon the charge, which is denoted by Q, and the distance between the two objects. According to Coulomb's law, the force of attraction or repulsion depends directly on the charge, but indirectly on the distance between them. If we increase the charge on one or both objects, we increase the force between them, and that's a direct relationship. If we increase the distance between the two objects, we decrease the force. But this is going to have a much bigger impact because the distance between them is squared. We call this the inverse square law. So here in this little bullseye, if we had a distance of 1, we would have a force equal to that little square there. But if we doubled the distance, we would have 4 times the force. And if we tripled the distance, we would have 9 times the force. And if we quadrupled the distance, we would have 16 times the force. This is called the inverse square law.